Hey everybody and welcome to River Church Online. Hey guys. We are so excited <laughs> yes. that you joined us today. We've got a great service ready and uh, we're just believing that God's gonna do something great uh, in your heart and in your life today. Uh, as we he head into worship here in just a second, uh, I wanna encourage you, it is a communion weekend, uh, so grab your elements if that's a cracker and some juice if you got it, uh, that'd be awesome. But uh, let's just take a moment and get ready to worship the Lord. Jesus, we honor you today. The life you gave, your body was broken, your love poured out. You bled and you died for me there on the cross. You breathed your last as you were crucified. You gave it all for me. Hallelujah, you're the Savior. Hallelujah, you're the friend. Hallelujah, your King. Hallelujah, it is finished. 
us with all our hearts. Every part of us, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done. Today, as we get to celebrate communion together, we not only thank Him for what He's done for us, but we remember and reflect upon that sacrifice, upon the cost, upon what you gave out in exchange for our hearts, for our freedom. says in scripture that on that night you took the bread and you broke it and you gave it to your disciples saying this is my body broken for you and we're going to do that together just go ahead and take whatever you have for the bread today and in this moment we do exactly what you told us to do. That we take this bread in remembrance of you, in remembrance of the body that you had, completely God, completely man. You felt every blow of the whip, every hammer on the nail, every thrust of the spear, every prick of the thorn. You felt it all. And it wasn't in vain, it wasn't simply in torment for anything that you've done or anything that you committed, but instead you bore it again and again and again and again for us. That pain was ours to bear. The punishment was upon us, but you lifted it off by your precious body, laying it down for our healing. And so today, as we take the bread, we remember that your body was broken for a purpose, for an amazing, earth-shattering, history-changing purpose, that it was broken for our salvation. Let's take the bread together. same way it says that he took a cup and he gave it to them saying drink this in remembrance of me this is my blood poured out for you and right now as we take the cup together we remember that there was no way back for us on our own that our sin, our iniquity, our walking and turning away from God had bought us only one thing, and that was death. Eternal, unending torment and death. And you saw our, our plight. You saw how hopeless we were on our own. And there was only one thing that could seal the deal for us to bring us back into relationship with you. And that was the blood of the covenant. And there was no other blood that could satisfy. It was only yours, lived as the perfect man in perfect communion with God the Father. It was you, Jesus. There was no other blood that could satisfy. It was you. And so we remember because you freely gave your life for us. You didn't hold back, but instead you walked straight into your destiny. That 
you gave your blood for us. And now because of it, we're cleansed, we're healed, we're whole, we're made new. Jesus, it's your blood and your blood alone that has sealed the deal for us, that has given us the opportunity to step into relationship with Almighty God. So we thank you for your blood that was poured out for us. We thank you and we remember what you've done as we take the cup together. We remember what you've done. Jesus, and that calls us to respond as we think in our hearts, as we ponder the mysteries of how you saved us, of how you loved us to the point of death, sacrificing your only son, it calls us to respond in worship. And we know that when we were beyond hope, we simply had to lift up our voices to you saying, we need you, God. We need you to make a way that you did, and you're still doing it. You're still the God that moves on our behalf that when we call, you answer for us. And it draws us in closer to you. You didn't just die for our eternity, you died so that right now we could be in relationship with you, that we could experience your presence. So we call out again. So I call you answer.
If you joined us during worship, we just want to say welcome. I am so thankful that we have the opportunity to just reflect on Jesus together, yeah. uh, what he did for us. And, and so thank you for joining us as we lift up his name. And Sorry. if you haven't connected with us before, we'd like to invite you to do that. Uh, we just, we, we want to know who you are. We want you to be a part of our church family. So connect with us today. Let us know who you are, where you're watching from. We just love to hear from you. Absolutely. And hey, today I get the opportunity to let you know about an organization that we here at River Church give to called Speed the Light. Uh, and what it is, is it's primarily our teenagers, but we also, uh, as, as a church body, give uh, to this organization. Mm -hmm. And it is equipping missionaries with the equipment that they need to do what God's called them to do. So, so if that's vehicles, awesome. If that's sound systems, great. If that's a dirt bike to get down the dirt path <laughs> that people call a road yeah. to get to that village to tell people about Jesus, uh, that's what we get to support. So when you give at River Church, that is part of what you're giving to. Yeah. And so we just wanna say thank you for that. Thank you for providing the projectors that people see presentations of the gospel. Thank you for providing microphones so that people can hear the good news of Jesus. And so if you're giving today, your tithes and your offerings right here on our online platform, we just wanna say thank you. What a cool opportunity we have to equip people to do what God's called them to do. Yeah, and you know, he brought up youth. And so yeah. I just have to make a plug for our youth ministry. Absolutely. We have River Church Youth that meets every Wednesday night at our Clinton campus at 7 p.m. 6th through 12th grade, no matter where you're located, come, it is a blast. Yep. And you know, we want you to bring your kids. We want your kids to join us for that. But I don't know about you, I'm looking forward to a great message. I'm excited. I can't wait. So guys, get out your Bibles and let's lean in together. Church Online. Uh, man, it has uh, been a while for me since I've been with you. As many of you know, my family and I took some extended uh, time away this summer just to get uh, refreshed and rested up and, and ready for this next season of ministry that the Lord's called us to at this church. And I just want to say thank you uh, for that time off. I want to say a special thank you uh, to all of our pastors and our leaders and our dream team uh, who've just done an incredible job uh, keeping the work of the ministry moving forward. And uh, it just it really was such a needed special time for us, uh, not only just individually, spiritually, but our family unit. Uh, we did uh, some camping, some good old-fashioned family road tripping, and uh, we actually went somewhere as a family that we'd never been before. We, uh, we found ourselves in uh, the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, and man, it was beautiful. Kids had a blast. Like We did some whitewater rafting and some zip lining, and we had a bear chase us out of the park one day, which was pretty exciting, uh, you know, but we came to this point where we're like, we just really had to get our kids out of there because uh, I, I don't know what it is, but as soon as we started getting into like the back roads of Tennessee mountains, my kids' teeth just started falling out, like like literally in the truck. Nathan just had a tooth just pop out. He lost three, Lydia lost two, and so it was like, all right, we got to get back home. And and I never thought that cornfields and tractors would be so comforting, or that our kids would erupt in praise at the sight of a Casey's. Uh, but we had that experience as we journeyed back. Uh, back home, and we really are excited uh, to be back and excited for what the Lord has for our church in this next season. Uh, we're kicking off a series today called Love My City. And uh, just to clarify, River Church is not a single city church, it's not just a Clinton church or a Prophetstown church, it's a regional church. Uh, it's an online church, literally accessible from anywhere with internet. In fact, just for fun, if you're watching online right now, go ahead and let us know what city you live in. 
Just uh, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear where you're from. I know there's a lot of cities that are represented at this church. And while we currently own buildings in just two of those cities, uh, we understand that the church is not a building. It's the people of God. And we said from the very beginning, we don't just go to church. Like church isn't an event that we attend. It's not a service that we watch. We are the church which means everywhere that we go, we take the church with us. In every city that we live in, we are representing the church of Jesus Christ. And with so many people online now, I think it's worth mentioning that we represent Jesus when we're online. And on social media, some people seem to forget that that we are Christ's ambassadors in person and online. But you need to understand Uh, That God is making his appeal to a lost and hurting world through us. And he wants them to experience his love through us. It's what we're called to. And that's what this series is about. We've got a Love My City event coming up that we've done the last couple of years called Serve Week. And uh, man, it's an incredible thing to be a part of. You're not going to want to miss out. Some people even take time off work so that they can lead teams and just be there for all of it. Uh, But, you know, we've mobilized hundreds of people to go out into our cities and just serve and meet practical needs because that is one way that we love like Jesus. You know, in John chapter 13, after Jesus served his disciples by washing their feet, He finished and he says, listen, I have set you an example. He says, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. And when we talk about love in this series, we're not talking about the kind of love you have for fried food or free shipping. We're talking about the kind of love that God has for us. The kind of love that Jesus displayed when he laid down his life. For us, you know, John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. And if you've never personally experienced that love, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that at the end of this message, because God loves you and he wants good things for you. And he wants you to enjoy not only his love, but the love of others. Like love is a central theme throughout scripture. According to Jesus, the single greatest command ever given is to love the Lord. And and this love, it's, it's not like a casual kind of love or a convenient kind of love. It's a fully surrendered, where you love the Lord with all of your heart, all your soul, your might, your strength. All that's within you. The second greatest command is like it. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. 1 Corinthians 13 you know, gives us a description of, of what love looks like. It's often read at weddings, which is, is totally appropriate. Uh, but it's not reserved solely for marriage. This is for all relationships. Verse 4 says that love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy It does not boast. It is not proud. Love does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil. Love rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. And right before that beautiful description, Paul says, listen, if we don't have love, we've missed the whole point. Right before that in verse 1, he says, listen, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I'm nothing. 
If I give all that I possess to the poor, and I give over my body to the hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And what he's saying is, listen, you can check all the religious boxes, and on the outside appear to have it all. But if you don't have love, what have you gained? You could be right about the election, right about the vaccine, right about any one of the divisive topics in our world right now. But if you don't have love, you're like a clanging cymbal. Just empty noise. Churches today can have all the buildings, all the talent, all the systems, all the knowledge, all the gifts. But if the church does not have love, it is not the church of Jesus Christ. In fact, according to Scripture, love is the test of our Christianity. It's not how much we know or how much we do or even what we don't do. It's do you love others? You know, 1 John 4, 8 says, Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. In verse 20, he says, If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. According to Jesus, love is our witness to the world. You know, in John 13, he says, listen, the world's going to know that you really are my disciples by your love one for another. And a key thought for today is this. If you're taking notes, loving God means loving God the people that he loves. You know, you remember in John chapter 21, after Peter's denial, Peter had made a mistake, he blew it. He's just going to go back to fishing, but Jesus intervened. Jesus had a plan for Peter, and as he was reinstating Peter, he asked him the question, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord, of course, you know that I do. But three times the Lord, the Lord asked him, do you love me? And then he said, feed my lambs. Do you love me? Then take care of my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. And personally, this is where I think a lot of churches and a lot of Christians miss it. You know, we can get so focused on things like avoiding evil and memorizing scripture and doing good things that we isolate ourselves from the very people that God has called us to reach. And if we're not careful... We end up with this self-centered version of Christianity where it's, where it's all about me. And it's all about my preferences and my views and how I want it. And all of a sudden, instead of loving people who are far from God, we start judging people who are far from God. But I'm telling you today, if you hear anything, hear this. If you want to love God, you have to love the people that He loves. And He loves the world. He loves the people in our cities, the people in your city. He didn't just come for the healthy. He came for the sick. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And he's got a plan to reach them. And you are part of that plan. So if you got your Bible, I'm going to invite you to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 60. And instead of points, uh, I want to give you today four pieces of a phrase that we've just adopted as part of our culture here at River Church. I'm going to use some language uh, that may be familiar to some of you, and that's on purpose. I want it to be familiar. I want it to get inside you. So let's turn to God's Word today. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise. Arise. Get up. Do something. Shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord. He's talking about the full weight of who God is. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. Upon you. You know, some of you, maybe you've never considered that God wants to anoint you. That God wants to put His power and His presence on you. But He does. And here's why. It says, darkness covers the earth. Just watch the news if you don't believe that. 
Maybe you feel like you're in a dark situation right now. He says thick darkness is over the peoples. But God has a solution. He says the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to use you. He wants you to see yourself as part of his solution. And listen what happens when God's glory shines on you in the middle of the darkness. He says nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Now, this for some of you is a pretty radical thought. You know, maybe you who grew up in church... You know, just thinking your whole life that there were basically two groups of Christian. There was, there was the congregant, you know, the, the person who shows up and sits in the pew. And then there's the reverend, you know, the, the man of God, the minister. But listen, there's nothing special in me or any one of our pastors that can't be in each and every single one of you. God wants his glory to rise on you. Like, I'm not the only minister at this church. The fact of the matter is, you are a minister. You know, some people wrongly get stuck in this mindset that pastors are the only ones called to ministry or missionaries. But biblically, that's just not true. In fact, Ephesians 4.11 tells us that Christ gave the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip His people... For works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Okay? Some translations say equipped for ministry. So that means if you are his people, okay, if you are among the people of God, then it's his desire. And he's given you pastors and leaders to help prepare you for the ministry that he has called you to do. And again, I'm going to teach you a phrase today if you're taking notes. And I'm praying that God will use this Uh, To help you love your city. So go ahead and write this down. The first part of the phrase is this. I am a minister. And maybe right now, wherever you're watching from, you you just go ahead and say that out loud. Go ahead and throw it in the chat. Just declare that truth. I am a minister. You're just as much a minister, just as called to serve. God is able to anoint you just as much as anyone. God can and wants to use you. 1 Peter 2.9 says that you may declare you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, that you would declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You say, I'm not a minister, pastor. I've got this other job. You know, I work a nine to five. You know, but ministers aren't just people who go to Bible school to do this for a living. That's not what a minister is. In the Bible, it's a nursing term, and it's the person who brings aid to the hurting. And can I just make an observation that our world is hurting right now? That our cities are hurting, that people in your neighborhood are hurting, people around you in your life are hurting. So God wants to anoint you. He wants his church to arise and to shine. God's word says that you are a royal priesthood. That you declare his praises because he did call you out of darkness. You're walking in his light. You're in the ministry. And not just some general ministry thing. If you're taking notes, you are in the ministry with a specific purpose. That's the second part of our phrase. You've got a specific role. You know, the Bible clearly says that God dispersed gifts. And God dispersed abilities to different people. And he did that strategically. Like, he placed the parts of the body exactly where he wanted them to be. And that's why, you know, from the very beginning, we've just had this conviction that we don't just, we don't just randomly and generally recruit volunteers. No, listen, we want you involved in the area that you love because we believe you have a specific purpose. And I would argue that you'll never be truly fulfilled in this life until you know what your God-given purpose is and you're doing it. You know, studies done in American seminaries have found that 87% of people in churches don't know what their purpose is. And if you picture this, the Bible says that we're a body, the church, we're the body of Christ. But can you imagine what it would look like if 87% of your body didn't know what it was? I didn't know what it was supposed to do. The ear didn't know. know. I'm sure you couldn't even function, right? 
And the body of Christ today, it's just not operating in its full capacity. It's a little dysfunctional at times because its members don't know what their purpose is. And I hope you hear me today. This is important. You are a minister, and you have a specific purpose. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says that we're God's workmanship, that we were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Did you know that there was something for you to do before there was a you? That God had the thing for you to do, and then he made you and perfectly designed you to be able to do that? God didn't make you and then look back and go, hmm, I wonder what we can do with this guy. No, God had the thing first, and then he made you. He designed you to do what he wanted you to do. And we believe that your design points to your destiny. It's why we have step two of growth track. It's all about helping you discover your unique design and the area of ministry that you were created to do. You know, if you've been unfulfilled, feeling like, ah, there's got to be something more, you know, feeling like your life's not counting, you know, it's because you got to discover your purpose, okay? Man, you're one of a kind. You're a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time. That's the third part of our phrase. One of the most healthy things you can realize is that of all times in history, God let you live now and here. You know, I think a lot of us in the church are interpreting news the wrong way. It's making, maybe it's making you scared, and you just want to run, and you want to hide, and you, get, you just want to get away from all of it. But that's not the way to look, look at it. Like, personally, like, I get it. I hate some of the things that are going on in the world right now, but deep inside, we got to say, God, thank you for putting me here and putting me right now in the middle of this darkness and chaos with the only answer. And that's Jesus Christ. Understand, God put you in the middle of a global epidemic and he gave you the cure to share with others. So don't hide, don't shy away, don't retreat. You carry the gospel truth of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, Ephesians 5 and verse 15 tells us to be very careful. Be very careful how we live. Not as, not as unwise, but as wise in making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. You know, that word opportunity in the Greek is keros, and it means window of opportunity. You understand that God chose you to live now, and that was on purpose. Acts 17 in verse 26 says he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. Why? To make an eternal difference. That's the last piece of our phrase today. I am a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time to make an eternal difference. And I hope you understand that we're not here just to do good. We're here to make an eternal difference. Can I tell you that not all good deeds are the same. If we feed the whole world and they go to hell, we lose. We're not here to just do good. We're here to do good in the name of Jesus so we can fill up heaven. That's our mission. The ultimate help isn't just helping people. It's helping them find Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11 says that no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus. He's the foundation. And the Bible tells us what happens if we live our life just, just doing good stuff but not pointing to Jesus. Verse 12, he says, if any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is because the day, judgment day, will bring it to light. In other words, you'll see if your life really mattered if what you did shows up in heaven. And I want to be clear, the things that we do don't earn us heaven, okay? Jesus 
gave us that gift by what he did for us on the cross. But the things that we do here and now can earn us rewards once we get there. And for some of you, this is, might be like the loudest thing you hear. You are an eternal being. Okay, in light of, our, of eternity, our time here on this earth is so, so short. But how we live here has a major impact on how we spend eternity. The people in your city, the people in your neighborhood are also eternal beings. And how you live your life here and now and how you represent Jesus to them may have an impact on where they spend eternity. That's why our mission is urgent. People are eternal. That's why Jesus gave us the great commission that Pastor Rachel preached about last week. He said, I want you to go and proclaim this good news to all creation. And I hope you're hearing me today. I hope this gets inside of you. If you want to love God, you've got to love the people that He loves. You're part of His redemptive plan. He saved you and He's called you and He's anointed you. And he's put people in your life to, for you to be a minister to, for you to share the good news with. You've been reconciled to God, and now he's entrusted to you this message of reconciliation. You are not simply a church attender. You're a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time to make an eternal difference. That's who you are. You are God's workmanship, His masterpiece. And this is so important because when you know who you are, you'll know what to do. When your identity is found in Christ and in His Word and what He says about you, when you know who you are, you'll know what to do. When your mind is transformed by His living Word, you'll be able to test and approve what His good, pleasing, and perfect will is for your life. You know, our communities, they may be covered in darkness, but Jesus shining through your life is God's answer to the darkness. And let me just tell you, there's no amount of darkness that can put out even the smallest flame of the smallest candle. Jesus said, if anyone follows me, he will have the light and never walk in darkness again. So I just want to say our phrase together, and wherever you're watching from, you can type it in the chat, you can say it out loud, but I want you to just, I want you to just declare this truth over your life, that you are who God says you are. Man, he's got purpose for your life. There's a calling on your life. And you can do what he said you could do. So just with faith, would you declare this phrase with me? I am a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time to make an eternal difference. Come on one more time. Let's be a little bold with faith. Just declare that over your life. Let it get in you. I'm a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time to make an eternal difference. And God, right now, I just thank you for every minister that's watching. God, I believe that you are stirring up, Lord, destiny and calling and vision for their life, God, that is from you. And I pray that the truth of your word, God, would ring louder than the lies of the enemy, than any doubt, than any fear, than any past failure, than any insecurity. God, that the truth of your word and who you say that we are, God, would ring louder than any of that. God, that we would find our identity in Christ, that we'd find our identity in you, and that in knowing who we are, God, that we will know what to do. God, even in uncertain times, God, even when the days are evil, God, even when we don't know how everything's going to work out in the short term, God, we know that we can do the good things that you have called us to do. God, help us to find our purpose in serving you and magnifying you. God, help us to love 
our neighborhoods and our schools and our workplaces and our cities, God, the way that you've loved us. And God, I just pray for revival, for spiritual awakening, for lost to be found and broken to be restored by the power and the goodness of your truth and your gospel. In your precious holy name, as you keep praying, I told you at the beginning that you are going to personally have an opportunity to receive God's love. And I just want you to know that God sees you right now, wherever you're at, and he loves you. And he so desperately wants you to find forgiveness in him. He wants you to find new life in him. And he wants you to find your purpose and your meaning for life in him. He's got a plan for you. Listen. It's not about what you've done or what you deserve. The Bible says that when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died in our place. He took the penalty and the punishment of our sin upon himself so that we could have eternal life with him in heaven so that we could be made new. And I believe there's some of you watching right now where God wants to make you new. He doesn't want you to just know about His love. He doesn't want you to just know about the cross. He wants to you to experience its power working in your life. And I'm telling you, if you call on His name right now, He will meet you where you're at. You can invite Him into your life, and you will never be the same again. And so I want to lead you in that prayer right now. If that's you, just cry out to Him and say, Dear Jesus, I need you in my life. I believe that you do love me. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you have a plan for me. I believe that you even want to use me for your kingdom and for your glory. So Jesus, would you be real in my life today? I confess that I'm a sinner and that you're sufficient what you did on the cross to save me from my sins. So forgive me today, make me new, and help me to live for you all the days of my life. In your precious holy name, amen. Man, what a great message. And we just wanna encourage you today, if you made that decision, to follow Jesus, we are so excited for you. We so want to celebrate you. with you. Absolutely. <laughs> so if you would, please, right here, uh, let us know by filling out a digital connect card, yeah. that decision that you made. Uh, you can even put prayer requests in there. We'd love to pray with you. If you're watching on our online campus, we have people right here, right yeah. now, that would love to pray with you. Uh, so please do that. Please reach out because uh, we're just so excited for you. We want to help you on your next steps with your walk with yeah. Jesus. You guys, it's been awesome being at church with you today. I know that Tom and I are just so thankful uh, to just to, to do this with yeah. you. And so we look forward to next week. Right. Come back, invite your friends Saturday at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. and Sunday at 9 and 11. We will see you then. Sounds great. See you guys.